The movie starts with nine dragons hauling a fancy bronze coffin to a hidden island called Sunshin Island in the Bidog Star Cluster. This island floats way up in the sky, above the clouds. People say there's a super powerful relic there, and if someone gets their hands on it, they'll become a god who can do amazing things like breaking the sky and earth. The story goes that a god only shows up once every million years. A swordsman named Lu Shang is tasked by the emperor to find the strongest warriors to join him on a journey to Zunshin Island. To choose these warriors, Lu Shang came up with an interesting test. Lu Shang took out a tiny jade ball from his pocket. He told everyone that whoever could grab the jade ball from his hand would be chosen to go on this important journey. Right away, a bunch of warriors came forward to try their luck. But Lu Shang, who had incredible fighting skills, could easily handle multiple warriors at once. Then came a warrior named Siu Kong. Siu Kong was fast and agile. He was determined to get that jade ball. Just as he was about to grab it, the jade ball suddenly flew away towards a nearby village. Without thinking twice, all the warriors started chasing after it. Siu Kong dashed towards that jade ball and he had his eyes set on it. But just as he was about to grab it, another warrior attacked and a cart almost squashed a kid. Siu Kong didn't hesitate though. He rushed to save the child, putting the child life ahead of the jade ball. Some of the other warriors thought Siu Kong was weak for choosing the child over the precious jade ball. But then Siu Kong revealed that he had managed to grab the jade ball during all the chaos. Suddenly, another warrior named Yu Xin jumped in. Yu Xin had some magical ring and bracelet that let him control things around him. He used his powers to hit Siu Kong from behind and snatched the jade ball while Siu Kong couldn't defend himself. Lu Shang is the emperor's second son and comes from the Holy Kingdom. He's got an older brother named Lu Shou, and they're always competing to be the strongest. Both of them are getting ready for a mission to Zunshin Island to find some important relic. But their dad, Emperor Lu, gave the dragon sword to Lu Shou because he thought he was more worthy. As Siu Kong was lying unconscious, he started to remember his past. He grew up as an orphan, and a skilled blacksmith master raised him along with other orphans. This master saw potential in Siu Kong and sent him off to the Holy Kingdom to learn martial arts. It wasn't easy because the master and the other orphans had to make a one million swords for the Holy Kingdom in exchange for Siu Kong's education. Now, Siu Kong was injured, but his siblings, including Shou Shou, Si Kong, Feng Kui, Nin Zi, and Lu Xin, came to his aid. They were determined to help Siu Kong get that great relic, no matter what it took. On another front, warriors from different sects were gathering at a portal that would take them to Zunshin Island. Among them was Yu Xin. There was also a sect called the Yushi Sect, and they sent a female warrior named Chai Xin, who had four guards with her. They started up the portal, and all the warriors were transported to Zunshin Island. Siu Kong's siblings watched from afar as the warriors disappeared. They woke up Siu Kong and surprised him by being there. They encouraged him to sneak into the Holy Kingdom and find a way to get to the portal so they could all join the others on Zunshin Island. Siu Kong tried to stop his siblings because they weren't supposed to go to Zunshin Island. Only the chosen warriors could go there, and if they got caught, they might get killed. But Si Kong explained that their master and the other siblings had worked hard to make one million swords just so Siu Kong could get the great relic. If Siu Kong failed, all that hard work would be for nothing. So, they sneaked into the Holy Kingdom. Siu Kong managed to get to the portal, but two guards there chased him away, saying he wasn't good enough. That's when Shou Shou and the others showed up to deal with those guards. After they beat them, they activated the portal to Zunshin Island. They all went through, one by one, and landed on the island. But when they got there, they were shocked to see dead bodies everywhere. Turns out, the warriors who came before them had fought each other to get the great relic. And Lu Shou was behind all this, and he had killed those warriors to get the relic for himself. Lu Shou told Siu Kong and the others to run, but he swung his dragon sword and hurt Siu Kong. On the second swing, Lu Xin got hit and died while trying to protect the rest of them. After all the chaos, Shou Shou told Siu Kong to go and handed him their master's green knife as a special inheritance. But just as Siu Kong was about to leave, Lu Shou swung his sword again. 
But then, out of nowhere, Liu Shang showed up to lend a hand. He told Xiu Kong and the others to run and said he would handle his brother because he also wanted that great relic. Lu Xiao was pretty surprised by how much Lu Shang's martial skills had improved. Lu Shang could even summon a monster to fight his brother. In the end, Lu Shang managed to defeat and kill Lu Xiao and take the dragon sword from him. Back in the cave, Xiu Kong was still really sad about Lu Xing's death. He felt like everything they were doing was pointless, like they wouldn't get that great relic after all. But while holding the green knife, Xiu Kong suddenly had a vision of the future. He saw the earth getting destroyed. Xiao Xiao explained that their master's green knife was really special. It came from a meteor, and it allowed Xiu Kong to see the future. She tried to convince Xiu Kong that they had to keep going, no matter what, because if the great relic ended up in the wrong hands and someone became a deity, the earth would be in big trouble. Their master had always seen something unique in Xiu Kong, and that's why Xiao Xiao believed in him and was sure they could save the world. Then, Feng Kui got all scared and told the others to check something out in the cave. Inside, they found humans turned into stone statues. And these weren't normal humans. Nin Zhe touched a piece of one of their hands, and it moved all by itself. Turns out, it was Che Xin from the Yushi sect, and she had some swamp trickery that turned her into a statue. But they managed to put her hand back, and she got back to normal. So, Siu Kong and the gang got freaked out and ran out of the cave. Outside, it started snowing and thick fog covered everything. Yu Xing, also scared out of his wits, came up to Siu Kong and told him to get out of there because it was seriously terrifying. And then, out of nowhere, horrifying creature showed up. It had two trunks that could pierce through people and do some serious damage. Siu Kong and his siblings teamed up to take on that monster. Siu Kong climbed onto the creature and told his siblings to move away. The monster then shot out a weird beam. Feng Kui got hit by it and suddenly turned into a statue, just like the ones they saw in the cave. The monster sucked up Feng Kui's energy. Then, Shou Shou grabbed her green knife. They figured out that the monster was scared of that knife. But the monster tossed Shou Shou aside and her knife got knocked away. So, Tsu Kong grabbed the green knife and went after the monster. But the monster threw him too. Si Kong climbed onto the monster and tried to stab it in the head with his spear, but the monster threw him against some rocks. When they saw their siblings getting killed, Tsu Kong got mad and focused all his energy. Then he went for the monster. Finally, they managed to defeat it and all the energy from the monster went into Tsu Kong's body. It was really sad because now only Siu Kong, Shou Shou, and Ninzi were left. They followed Yu Xin back into the cave and reached a portal, but Yu Xin got scared and wanted to go back to Earth, but it didn't work, the portal wouldn't let them go back. Shou Shou said they had to get that great relic if they wanted to go back to Earth. Shu Kong convinced Yu Xin to join forces in their quest for the great relic, but Yu Xin wasn't sure he could be of any help because his magical ring and bracelet were damaged. He felt pretty useless without those relics. Tu Kong, though, reassured him and told him that he was a strong warrior, and he believed in him. Then, they heard some weird noise getting closer. It turned out to be four warriors from the Yushi sect, who had this power to stay hidden. These four warriors managed to catch Siu Kong and the gang. Che Xin then came forward. Siu Kong told her that she wouldn't be able to get the great relic alone, and that they should all work together to find it. Chai Xin told her guards not to kill Siu Kong and the others. Siu Kong suggested that they team up to find the relic. But then, out of nowhere, that monster came back and they all ran for their lives. Even though those warriors were invisible, the monster still managed to kill Chai Xin's guards. Chai Xin opened a door, but there wasn't a path ahead, just a round stone platform hanging over a cliff. At the same time, one of those monsters opened up his chest to attack but one of Chai Xing's guards made a shield to protect everyone. There was a big energy blast, and they all tumbled onto the round stone. Out of the blue, the stone started falling apart. Yuxane used his power to control the stone, even though he didn't have the relic bracelet. Turns out, he could still use his abilities. But his power wasn't strong enough, and the stone started tilting and falling apart.
Seeing everyone in danger, Su Kong didn't want to lose his siblings again. He grabbed Shou Shou's hand, and his energy wrapped around everyone. With his strength, he transported them to a safe spot, and they all got rescued. Finally, Che Sing agreed to team up with Su Kong, but she made it clear that if they found the Great Relic, she'd take it for herself. They went into a room and found these weird corpses wearing masks. Che Sing stepped up, thinking one of those masks might be the famous Great Weapon. The room got tense. Su Kong warned Che Sing not to mess with the mask because it seemed too easy and suspicious, like it could be a trap. Suddenly, Chai Sing's guard attacked Siu Kong. The guard stabbed Chai Sing, trying to grab the great relic for themselves. The guard took the mask, and then the door closed. The mask started burning the guard until there was nothing left but ashes. The ceiling started coming down, and everyone panicked. Siu Kong noticed five weird circles on the floor. If they stepped on all the circles, the door would open. But if they missed one, the door would close again. Yuxing used his power to lift the statues in the room and put them on the circles. They found out there were only four statues in the room, and they needed five to open the door. Yuxing told the others to leave while he offered to step on the fifth circle, willing to sacrifice himself. But Su Kong couldn't bear to let him die, so he used his power to pull him out, saving him. After things calmed down, Shou Shou gave her green knife to Su Kong because she thought he deserved it. Meanwhile, Chae Sin used her power to heal her wounds. They stood in front of a big closed door with three glowing symbols. Chae Sin explained that a powerful demon king with a great relic was inside. Rumor had it that anyone who got that relic would become incredibly powerful. They tried to open the door, but couldn't. Then, Lu Shang showed up, having killed Chae Sin's guard, which made one of the symbols on the door go dark. Lu Shang said that to open the door, they needed to sacrifice three human lives. That's why he had let them escape earlier. Lu Shang wanted to use them as sacrifices to open the door, and he still needed two more lives. Lu Shang attacked them, and Su Kong managed to save Shou Shou, Chai Xin, and Nin Zi. But sadly, Lu Shang had already strangled Nin Zi, and despite Su Kong's efforts to help, Nin Zi didn't make it. They still needed one more sacrifice. Siu Kong fought back against Lu Shang with the green knife, but Lu Shang drew his weapon and hit Siu Kong repeatedly. In the end, Siu Kong was defeated. Suddenly, the big door swung open and Shou Shou, holding the green knife, rushed inside. Meanwhile, outside, Yu Xin tried to stop Lu Shang, but he easily got away and followed Shou Shou inside. Just as Shou Shou was about to destroy the Great Relic, Lu Shang stuck the dragon sword into it, and she got thrown out. The door closed again. Inside, Lu Shang took the Great Relic, which was a mask, and put it on. All of a sudden, the mask covered Lu Shang's face, and something strange took over his body. Outside, monsters showed up, and the door blew up. Something came out of the room. Che Xin got scared when she realized it wasn't Lu Shang, but the Demon King. Turns out, the Demon King tricked the warriors into coming to Zunshan Island with a fake story about the Great Relic, and he planned to use it to resurrect himself. The Demon King, after coming back to life, had a terrible plan to wreck the world. All of a sudden, there was a big earthquake. The Demon King wanted to drop Zunshan Island right on top of the Holy Kingdom to crush it, but Che Xin figured out that the Demon King's power wasn't fully back yet. So, she asked Yu Xin and Shou Shou to protect her while she used her last bit of power to bring Su Kong back. Down below, Emperor Lu and all the Holy Kingdom warriors tossed their swords into the air. The swords formed a kind of shield to stop Sunshine Island from falling. Up above, Yuxang made a shield out of stones to keep the monsters away. He was struggling with what little strength he had left. In the end, Yuxang sacrificed himself by wrecking the bridge in front of them. Then, Che Xin gave her soul to Su Kong hoping that he could save the world from the Demon King. Su Kong's heart started beating again, and he woke up in a strange place. There was this mysterious figure there, telling Su Kong that he had to save the world because it wasn't his time to die yet. Su Kong asked how he could do that, and the voice said only a god could beat the Demon King. Su Kong was confused because there hadn't been a god to protect the world for a thousand years. 
But the voice said that Siu Kong's super speed was the key to traveling through space and time, and he had to believe in himself. Suddenly, the figure revealed himself, and it was Siu Kong himself from the future. He said that in a thousand years, Siu Kong would become a god, and the problems he was facing now were just a step toward gaining that power. Then, Siu Kong woke up, he took Shou Shou back to their home on land, and got stronger. Siu Kong flew back to Zunshin Island, took the green knife, and started wiping out all the monsters there. He absorbed all the energy from the monsters. The Demon King tried to get Siu Kong to join him, but Siu Kong refused. They had a big fight, and Siu Kong's green knife broke. But he gave the Demon King a powerful hit. They kept on fighting, and the Demon King claimed that Siu Kong was just a regular human and couldn't beat him. The Demon King brought out this massive weapon that hit Siu Kong and sent him flying into space. But out there in space, Siu Kong's power got even stronger. He used his special ability to travel through space and time and sent the Demon King a thousand years into the future. In the future, the Demon King still wanted to take over Earth, but Siu Kong, now a god, told him to stop talking so much. With one powerful move, Siu Kong turned the Demon King into ashes. Moral lesson from the story, sometimes it's not about grabbing the shiny ball or the magical mask, but about doing the right thing, like saving a kid from danger.